so now we'll find electric field due to a uniformly charged rod at an axial point and at a general point so for an axial point let's say we have a limited rod finite rod of length l and one end of the rod is at a distance r from the point where we want to calculate the electric field so we'll take a small element dq at a distance x from p so we'll calculate the electric field due to this element so here dq that should be by unitary method dx divided by l into q so dq will be dx divided by l into q and otherwise the field will be k dq by x square so we'll just integrate it limits will be from r to r plus l so we are going left so we have considered left as positive x so that's why we are putting the limits as r to r plus l so this should be minus 1 by x and if you put the limits you will get your answer e x l is k q by l 1 by r minus 1 upon r plus l now let us find field at a general point so at a general point p which is at a distance r from the rod now here instead of the length of the rod let's consider the angles theta 1 and theta 2 the edges of the rod is making at an angle uh, is making with the point p so here we considered length but here we will consider angle so this point is making theta 1 from here and theta 2 here so to calculate the field again we will take a small element here at a distance x dx width and due to this element small electric field will be de so we will break this d into two components so one is e, de perpendicular because this is perpendicular to the rod and one let it be de parallel parallel to the rod so we will find each of them individually so let's start with e parallel so de parallel should be de sin theta you put the value of de that should be k dq by square of square of this distance which is x square plus r square times sin theta which is x upon root of x square plus r square so if you substitute x as r ten theta and integrate so I am not doing the integration here. If you do this substitution, it's a simple one. You will get e parallel is k lambda by r sine theta d theta. Now limits of theta. So we are considering this theta as positive. So limits will be minus theta 1 to plus theta 2. Which gives our answer. Now let's find de perpendicular. So that should be de cos theta de is again same k lambda dx by x square plus r square cos theta will be r upon root of r x square plus r square so again we will do the same same substitution x equal to r 10 theta and this time we will get cos theta inside so limits will be same minus theta 1 2 plus theta 2 and we will get our answer k lambda by r sin theta 2 plus sin theta 1 now take let's take two special cases for a infinite wire so the values of theta 1 and theta 2 for infinite will be 90 degrees so you can see that e parallel will cancel out that you can see from symmetry also and e perpendicular so sin 90 plus sin 90 it should be 2k lambda by r now for a semi infinite wire at the edge i mean at a point p which is at a distance which is perpendicular to the edge of that infinite wire so here you will see that theta 1 is 0 and theta 2 is pi by 2 so you put those values here you will get e parallel will come to be same as e perpendicular that will be k lambda by r so I am just using the term e parallel so you can use I mean you can use common sense to see that it should be downwards because of the electric field because of the wire which is on the top 
the electric field should be opposite to it that's why downwards so yeah this is the whole analysis of electric field due to a uniformly charged rod